Hi, I'm Mubanga and I'm developing a game where you build a town on a tiny planet that can be played in VR. Previously, I showed you how I generate my planets, how I implemented camera controls, and how I created the system that allows you to place buildings on the surface of the planet. However, at the moment I don't really have a good way of picking which buildings I want to place, so today I will be working on a user interface. I want to develop the overall look and feel and work on the first four panels of the UI. These will be a main menu, a build menu, an info panel that shows you information about the entity that you have selected and a statistics bar that will show you how much resources you have. And I need all of them to work in VR and on PC. Let's start with the look and feel. I wrote down some key qualities I want to have in my design and created a Pinterest board to collect some examples. The UI is going to have a dark theme because it fits the space aesthetic and a light theme doesn't really work in VR anyway. I think it will be nice to have big rounded corners on the panels because it fits the cutesy look and it will contrast nicely with the sharpness of the low poly buildings. I like the frosted glass look that you find in Apple designs and the Windows Fluent Design system and I think it will look really great in VR. Overall, I want the UI to feel modern and just not get in the way of the rest of the game. One of my favorite fonts is called Montserrat. It looks sleek and is very readable, so I think it will be a very good fit for this UI. I generated the color palette using Coolers.co. It gives you a new color palette every time you press space. Or even better, if you have the browse extension, it gives you a new one every time you open a new tab. I heard it became pretty difficult to blur UI elements in the universal render pipeline. Luckily I was aware of this algorithm called Quasi Blur. So I did some searching and I found a good implementation by Sebastian Hein on his GitHub. At first I couldn't get it to work in VR, because it doesn't support the single render pass feature that I have been using up until this point. This allows Unity to render both eyes as if it was one display. Which is a lot more efficient than the alternative multipass where Unity renders first the left eye and then the right eye. I did a bit of research and I think I can fix it so that the Kawasi Blur algorithm works with the single render pass feature. But for now, I'm gonna use multipass and put it on the to-do list. We can come back to this once we do a big optimization pass. The rounded corners were no problem at all. I just created the sprite with rounded corners and used the sliced UI image to make it work on any panel size. Although creating a UI for VR sounds really exciting to me, I think it will be a better idea to start working on the PC side first. This allows me to tune in the design language a bit easier and create some components that I can reuse around my project. I started off by creating a main menu where I made some components for the panel and the buttons and defined the styles for the title and the other text. A menu without options isn't really useful so I created the section where you can generate a new planet based on four different sizes. I also created the settings menu. I don't have a lot of settings right now, but one thing I could think of was the ability to change the color of your hands and your sleeves. I think it will help a lot with immersion if the color of your virtual hands matches that of your own skin. I also added the button to close the menu and a button to quit the game. I created a little script that switches between the sections of the main menu and I also added some animations using an asset store plugin called Lean Tween. It made it fairly easy to add some life to the otherwise static UI. I then proceeded to create a build menu bar where I made use of some free font awesome icons. I might create some custom icons later, but especially with the new Font Awesome 6 release, I think they really fit nicely with the style that I'm going for. When you click on one of the icons, a new panel will open that will show you all the buildings in that section that you can place. For example, if you click on the house icon, you will see all the different housing options that there are. These are shown in a reusable card component that I made. I don't want to have to come back to the build bar code every time I create a new building. So I created a scriptable object that I called build entities collection that will house all the buildable entities in a central location. In the entity class, I added a new object called info that will contain the entity's name, description, 
group and image path. For this, I rendered out an image of every building that I have in Blender and added the outline using Infinity Designer. And then in the build bar, I can filter my entities by group name and show them that way. And then finally, I added the functionality so that when a player clicks on a card, the build manager will get told which building needs to get built. When the player clicks on an existing entity, such as a building or a person, I want there to be a little pop-up window with information about that entity. So to do that, I created the select manager that's very similar to the build manager that I spoke about last episode. When the player clicks on an entity, it checks to see if it has a new entity module called selectable. The selectable module will then activate an outline, which I got from an asset store package, and it will then tell the UI to show a pop-up window with the right information. The final screen that I will be making for the PC in this episode will be the resources panel. Eventually it will show you stuff like how many villagers you have, if they all have rooms and other resources. But currently I don't have much to show there, so I just add some placeholder content and call it a day. I'll slowly add to it while we build the systems for villagers and resources. In the second episode of this series, I said I wouldn't be using the Unity XR rig. But while making the maze game in the last episode, I found some handy stuff that I could be using in that XR rig, especially when it comes to UI. One of those components is the XR Ray Interactor. It allows players to interact with the world and the UI using a ray that comes from their hand. At a later point, I might come back and add it to the build system as well, but I think the system that I built a couple of episodes ago works alright as well. So for now, I will only be using it for the UI. So attach the XR Ray Interactor to a new object attached to the right hand. Because it's the player that scales up and down and not the planet itself, I had to write a little script that made the line scale with the player. And then I started off the VR UI by copying all the screens to a new world space canvas. I want the main menu to follow the player's head but I want to keep all the UI stuff separate from the player. So I create a little script that will fake an object being a child of another object. So in this case, it's the main menu being attached to the head mounted display. This way I can keep my UI separate from the player while everything still moves like it is attached to each other. Unity has its own parent constraint component, but it doesn't include scaling. And they do have a separate skill constraint component but when I combined the two, I couldn't get it to behave the way I would expect, so I just wrote my own. So now that everything works, I'm really glad I started using that XR Ray Interactor. Writing a system to handle all these event systems would have been a pretty big chore. So now I'm finally able to change the color of my hands in VR. The build menu will basically function the same way as it does on PC. But instead of showing at the bottom of the screen, the build bar will show in your hand when you turn it over. To do so, I created a little script that checks the rotation of your hand, and once you go past a certain angle, it will show the build bar. And this is where I need to be careful, because right now I have something that's starting to resemble a game, and I could be spending hours just building this little village on this planet but I need to keep going. For now, I added the stats bar to my left hand as well, because I don't really know where I want it to be, but we'll figure that out once we actually start using it. And then there's the info panel. At first I thought of putting it in your right hand, similar to the build bar, but at a later stage, you will be able to interact with the information on that panel and then you will be using your offhand, so it might be better to just figure something else out. I think it would be nice if those panels float near the thing that you have selected. To do so, I came up with a solution that gets me 80% of the way. The center of my planet is the origin of my coordinate system. So if I take the position of that entity and multiply it by some factor, I can make it float above the thing. Then I just rotate it so it's always facing the player, and scale it so it's the same size if the player zooms in and out. 
I still have some issues where the panel can be behind the planet or intersecting with something. So it would be really nice to spend some time on a solution that smartly positions the panel where I want it to be. But that would probably take me weeks to figure out. So I'm gonna stick with good enough. So yeah, that's another episode. I figured out the look and feel of the UI. I created a couple of panels for both PC and VR and implemented a system for selecting objects. Now I can easily generate planets of different sizes, place buildings on them and select those buildings. I want to thank all of you for commenting, liking, subscribing, all that stuff. It's really motivating. Keep an eye out for the next episode. I think I will be adding some villagers to this game, which will be pretty exciting. Hopefully I will see you there. Bye.